Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to week seven of the picks. And Sean, ah. what a wild week it was last week in the NFL, man. Oh, yeah. Very wild and wild in the fact that we have no more undefeated teams, including your team, Rocha. I technically moon watching this week. There's no moon to look at. But, yes, the 49ers finally lost and the Eagles lost, man. Yeah, fuck the Eagles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they lost to the freaking J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> and they didn't even have sauce, sauce Gardner. Nope. What? How do you lose to the Jets? And they don't even have their t- number one player on the team. I'm I'm shocked. I'm a little shocked. Uh, Jalen Hurts with three interceptions? Three Jeez. picks, yeah. Come on. I, Dak didn't throw that many. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> Against that team anyways. You know. Yes. Uh, Josh's Bears unfortunately took another L. Justin Fields. Talk about him more a little bit later. Yeah. Looks like he's going to be out for a while. Your Cowboys, Sean, got back on the winning track. Oh, yes, they did, Richard. Yes, oh, they did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, the Cowboys got back on track. Not as much as I wanted us to, right? I, I wanted us to score more points, but you know what? It was a hell of a game on Monday Night Football, and that's all we could ever want, you know? Yes, sir. So, yeah, so this week in pick them. Josh got nine picks right. What about you? I got 12. 12. Uh, I had to redeem myself from last week. Yo, this is terrible. I don't yeah, <laughs> I, I only got 10. I'll take the double digits from last week as well. I got 10 right. Let's get into our top 10 for week number six. Lean it off with 13 picks right. Wowzers. 13. It's Metalhead Loves Cowboys. Hey, Loves Cowboys. Let's go. There you go. Dak Attack. We're 12 picks right. We got JJ Swove, also 12. Rockwell up there again with 12 picks right. Uh, Nicolum with 12. Uh, Matawa. With 12 <laughs> as well. Crazy dog with 12 picks, right? Let's go. Okay. okay. Ricky Jane, the 49ers fan with 12 picks. Okay. <laughs> Cardinals slash Bills fan, uh, Mafia fan 11 with 12 picks, right? And leaning off or to- uh, rounding off our top 10 is Crano Man with 12 as well. So there we nice. go. Nice. Very nice. Congratulations. Our top 10 overall so far. Cam Pick stays up top. Yeah, followed by Vince DiBiaso also staying in second place. We got Rockwell in third place. Joe Mama Fudge Cancer in, in fourth place. Good name. Lions, good name. the king of the north, is in fifth. Oh. Sh- Shane Rogers, DDC19 in uh, seventh place. TJ Nuts in eighth place. Detroit Tristo stays in the top ten in ninth. And Jay Herb Herbo owns QC at number ten. What? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I like but there it. we go. There's our top ten. Sean, you ready to get into the picks this week? I'm ready. I'm ready to get all these right and uh, keep get, keep it going. Let's go. Guys. If you have it as we get into it, hit that like button. Let us know your picks for this week on the premiere and in the replay. And here we go. It's time for week seven of the picks. Let's go. Let's start it off here. Thursday night football. The Jacksonville Jaguars go into New Orleans. Now, Sean, we don't know about T-Law. Looks <sighs> like he's going to play the Saints Oh, without both their starting tackles in the game, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, um, really, really hope T Law plays. I know they're saying he's optimi- they're optimistic, but uh, you know we'll never we won't know until probably tomorrow. Um, mm-hmm. but they said it's a slight sprain. Yes, so, so that's a good thing. It's at least it's not like a major sprain or anything like that. If if he's got any kind of hope, that's awesome. That's great news. Mm-hmm. So even if he does miss this short week, he probably won't be out too long. But yeah, missing two tackles is, is not looking good for the Saints. Um, Jacksonville defense looked pretty solid last week. You know, they, yep. they got some turnovers there. Um, I'm thinking I'm following. I'm feeling to even even if T-Law doesn't play, I might still lean towards the Jags here uh, okay. because ETN is turning it on lately, man. Yes, sir. I, I, even if they don't have their quarterback, man, I think they're wearing the ball pretty well and mm-hmm. and look pretty good. 
Yeah, I'm going to go Jacksonville in this one as well. I think t is going to play. It sounds like he's going to play. Now, New Orleans without both their tackles, man. Derek Carr is going to be running for his life. Jacksonville's mm-hmm. defense has stepped up a little bit here. And you're right. Travis Etienne is on a mission right now, man. Yeah. Give me these, the uh, the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars in a close one. Josh will be going opposing us. He's actually going with the New Orleans Saints who are favored by one. This son of a biscuit. <laughs> all right. All right. Over under is 40. What are you saying here? Oh, I'm going under. Um, under. Both tackles out. Uh, T loss still probably going to be a little sluggish, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think there's going to be a running uh, running game. Uh, Kamar and Etienne are probably going to feast. And I mm-hmm. think uh, I think it's going to be under. Yeah. I'm thinking like a 20 to 17 game. So I'll yeah. go just slightly under. Yeah, exactly. All right. Next up. It's going to Chicago, where the Las Vegas Raiders coming off that win against the Patriots, taking on the Bears, coming off that loss against the Vikings. And in this game, both Jimmy Garoppolo and Justin Fields. Now, when it comes to Justin Fields, uh, their head coach did come out and say it's all about how he can grip the football. If he's able to grip it with enough force, he'll be able to play. But it doesn't appear neither him nor or Jimmy G are going to play this week. Yeah, a little sucks, man. Justin Fields has started getting it going, all right? Well, uh, two mm-hmm. previous games, he was putting up yards and touchdowns and all the above. Um, and then he gets hurt. It just – you hate to see it. You hate to see it. So we'll, we'll hope to see what happens with that. Absolutely. It should be probably Brian Hoyer versus uh, Bagnet. So, Sean, who are you going with? <sighs> this, is, this is a little tough, man. You know – Especially, see if if Jimmy G was playing, I'd definitely take the Raiders. Uh, yes. Just him being out throws a little wrench in the the situation. But you know what? I, I I'm going to pick the Raiders. Um, mainly because I don't. I'm not sure. I, I know. Uh, what's how do you say his name? Like right? Badging something Badgins? like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Badgin didn't look too bad. He didn't look too bad coming into a game. But we've seen yeah. it plenty of times. These guys that have never had any time type of play, uh, time come in mid game they look decent they're okay mm-hmm. but then when you go and you're practicing and now all the pressure's on you now you're thinking about it all week you're like oh my god i have to go out there and play because before it was just all instinct you, yes you, it's just all adrenaline now you have to think about it they mm-hmm. don't always perform good the following week after so i'm kind of leaning towards raiders here um and it's it could be a battle though man it yeah. actually could be a close game and i'm ho- really hoping dj moore still goes off for fantasy purposes so we'll mm-hmm. see yeah, I'm going to rock with the Raiders, too. I'm going to trust whether it's uh, Adrian O'Connor, Brian Hoyer, to get this victory. I just like the Raiders' defense to defend a little bit better. Uh, so I am going to go Raiders in this game, man. Mm-hmm. Josh is also going to go with the Raiders. He says, and I quote, uh, Crosby is going to kill us. And this is a game where the Raiders have to get Devontae Adams heavily involved against the team he knows well. Bears defense has been playing a little bit better, but this could be a tough one against Jacobs, Jacoby Myers, and Devontae Adams. That's true. That's true. I, I could I could definitely use uh Jacoby Myers in fantasy. Me so, Got some bye weeks, man. So bye weeks are kind of hitting me now in fantasy. There's, Jesus. Yeah, there's like eight <laughs> teams on bye this week. It's crazy, yeah. man. Yep. So we're all gonna go rock with the Raiders. Sean, you're taking the over or under on 35, 37 and a half. Bro, this has got to be one of the lowest un, uh, over under points we've yeah. seen all year. Uh, I'm going go under actually. I, I think it's if it's going to be anything, it's going to be 17, 14, like something like that. It's mm-hmm. going to be low scoring. So, yeah, I think both teams are going to try to rely on the run game. We'll see if Rashawn Johnson gets out of concussion protocol in time. Yeah. I'm going to go the under as well with two backup quarterbacks. All right. But good luck, guys. All right, next up, we go to Indianapolis where the Cleveland Browns and P.J. Walker are coming off the great upset over my San Francisco 49ers, taking on Mitchu Mania, brother, and the Indianapolis Colts. In this game, Deshaun Watson still is not practicing, looking yeah. like it could be another P.J. Walker game. Also, Kareem Hunt. Did not practice today with a hip injury, so that's something to keep your eye on. On the other side of the ball, obviously you guys know AR5 looking like he's out for the year. Sean, what you thinking? Ah, yeah, that sucks, uh, Anthony Richardson, man. Um, This one's interesting, man. Um, But you know what? 
I, I'll just go ahead and say I'm going with the Browns. Um, what they did last week, and I know a lot of people uh, are more talking about the Niners. You know, CMC was out, and then Debo got hurt. Mm -hmm. But got to give props to the Browns. It, yes, people, they didn't have Sean Watson. They didn't have Nick Chubb. So they've had injuries themselves before the game even started, and they still went out and performed. Got to give them credit where credit's due. That defense uh, did great. They picked off Brock mm -hmm. Purdy for the first time all yep. season, right? And they they forced him under pressure and made that offense, no offense, Richard, look human. Uh, Y'all been looking dominant all year. So mm -hmm. props to the Cleveland Browns defense and Miles Garrett and all those guys. Uh, I'm leaning towards the Browns just because that main reason. Uh, defense travels. This may be on the road and it might be tough, but defense travels well typically. And I'm going to go Browns here. Yeah, no, I'm going to agree. I'm going to go Brownies too, whether it is to Sean Watson or P.J. Walker. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're right. That defense, it doesn't matter if Debo was out. It doesn't matter if Christian McCaffrey was out. They were unstoppable last week, man. They were getting the Brock Purdy, forced him on that interception. If the Cleveland Browns can form any sort of offense over the next 10, uh, over the next, yeah, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, they're going to be an absolute force to be record with. You're looking at the best defense in the league in this game of the Cleveland Browns, and I think that defense does show up. Garner Minshew threw the ball 55 times last week. That can happen. If it does, he's going to throw three picks again just like he did. Give me the Brownies. Yeah, definitely and agree. Josh is going to agree with this. He's out to go with the Brownies. I think it's pretty given, yeah. Uh, so over mm. under is 40. What's your take on this one? Oh, I'm gonna go under. Uh, I'll go under on this one. It's a lot of unders this week, but I'm gonna yeah. go under. Yeah, yeah, I just don't trust again with two backup quarterbacks. I think this is gonna be under game two. I think you're looking at something just like the score last week between the Niners and the Browns. Yes, sir. There we go. All right, let's go over to Gillette Stadium where oh, it's the Buffalo Bills. This might be the most exciting game this week. <laughs> Taking on the New England Patriots who are one in five. Uh Sean, anything to talk about in this game? <laughs> uh Bills take give me the points. Um now I will say this. Uh, which bills are we gonna get? You know, yeah. but uh but they, they gotta bounce back. They have to. Uh, they this is a team they know very well. So uh, I think everybody in the chat, even Patriot fans, are going bills at this point. So yeah, uh there's not much to say. It's bills, points. I'll even take the over. I think they might score at least 30 okay. points themselves, if not 40 themselves. Yeah, I'm going to go Bills as well, man. I don't think we're going to see the same Bills we saw. Now, remember, they played like doo-doo. I said doo-doo. Against the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars in London, maybe that jet lag again got to them again. I think they'll come out better, come out strong. Yeah, I'll take the Bills and the points, and I'll also take the over. Josh is going with the Patriots. Yeah, psych. He's going with the Buffalo Bills as well. <laughs> uh, I'd be. I'd have to go check on Josh's medication if he picked the Patriots. Jesus yeah. Christ! <laughs> <laughs> All right, on uh, to New York, where the Washington Commanders take on the New York Football Giants. The Giants getting Barkley back made a big difference last week. And Daniel Jones is limited in practice this week, but has not yet been cleared for contact. So, Sean, it's looking like a Tyrod Taylor game again. Yeah, uh, Giants did get Saquon Barkley back, but I think they forgot about him on the goal line. Yes. Um, yeah. I, Daniel Jones, if he plays, then this is going to be actually a pretty probably solid game. It could be anyways. Um, but I'm still going to go Washington Commanders either way. Um I'm like what I'm seeing from Howell, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam Howell's been pretty solid, you know. Um, Curtis Samuel's been pretty consistent for them, man. Low key, man. Um, a lot better than you know. He's been, I feel like, a little bit more uh, his target, Sam Howell's target, than Scary Terry sometimes. Yeah. So I'm gonna go watch the Commanders here. I think uh, they should win. Giants, we know they have a shit offensive line. I think Commanders should get after that too. Oh yeah. 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 I'm going to go with the Washington Commanders as well. You're right. I'm loving how Sam Howell's looking, man. This dude's really taking over right now, and mm -hmm. he is spreading the ball. It's Samuel. It's Scary Terry, Logan Thomas. I want to see and hopefully see Brian Robinson, for fantasy purposes, <sighs> get going this week. I think he will. I'm also going with the Washington Commanders. Please get 
Robinson. I, I feel like they, they have opportunities, but they don't mm-hmm. give it to him all the time. So I agree. Getting frustrating, right? Mm-hmm. But I think they'll get get him going eventually. Josh is also going with the Washington Commanders, but he says it's an UG pick. Of course, it's ugh. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. Fucking Commanders and Giants. Ugh. <laughs> uh, over or under thirty nine. You stick with the over. You going to? Uh, you stick with the under. You going over? You know what? Hmm. Oof. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was tempted to say over, but I'm going to go under. I, I think it's going to be like a 20 to 13 game. Uh, so it's gonna be, I'm going to go. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go just slightly over. I think the Commanders could score enough points to hit the over, while the Giants maybe score around 14 points because the offense didn't look terrible for yeah. Tyro Taylor. And hopefully Barkley could get a couple touchdowns. I'm going to go just slightly over in this game. All right, all right. We'll see. All right, this should be a fun one. Off to Tampa Bay, where it's the Atlanta Falcons coming off a loss to those Washington Commanders, taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, coming off what was a very disappointing loss to the Detroit Lions. Baker Mayfield, he has a bruise on his non-throwing hand. That's the only injury to talk about in this game, but he'll be good to go. Uh, so what you thinking here, Sean? Well, I have a main question for you real quick. Uh, who's, I, the, who's the Flackens? I see it. <laughs> You already know everybody in the premiere is talking about it. It's already been done. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but, yeah, so uh, this game is uh, is interesting, right? Um, the, yeah, like you said, the Bucks came off that loss to the Lions. It's the Lions, though, man. I, I'm, I'm going to go Bucks here at home. I don't trust okay. the Falcons. They're too inconsistent for me right now. Um, and they I, I still, talking about another Robinson, I feel like they don't give Robinson the ball enough. Like he should be getting the ball 20 to 30 touches a game Mm -hmm. minimum. And that could be in the passing game and running game. Yeah. Um, I don't trust Ritter. Uh, He's had times where he looks good, but there's times where he just just looks awful. So uh, I'm going to trust the bucks. I'm going to trust that defense. Um, Give me the bucks here at home. I'm going to go the Atlanta Falcons in this game. Okay. I think they bounce back. You're right. Desmond Runner has looked up and down. I think he has one of his good games here, man. I think they will get Bijan Robinson involved, man. Please. And I think the Buccaneers, we all expect them to be this kind of bad team. Maybe for me, this is where they start to decline a little bit. I'm actually going with the upset. Give me the Falcons here on the road. All right. All right. Interesting. Interesting. So Josh is the tiebreaker here. He will side with. Mr. Sean, he's going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, I always said Josh is a smart guy, you know? So. <laughs> uh, over under 38, what'd you say? Oh, over under 38? I'm going to go. Dude, I'm going under a lot this week. I'm going okay. under. I think it's. I think this might be one of those low-scoring weeks. In yeah. The NFL. Okay. I'm going to go over. I think we can see both offenses have a really good game. Tampa Bay's defense didn't look a lot great. Again, I know it's the Lions. They have a really great offense. But I think this could be a high-scoring game. Give me the over, baby. All right. All right. What should be one of the best, if not the best, game of the week? The Detroit, the 5 and one Detroit Lions go into Baltimore to take on the Ravens. They did not elect to have a bye week after the London game. So they are coming off the London game. Sean, what you thinking about this game? Take in mind that Monty is going to most likely be out. But Jameer Gibbs is back. Jameer Gibbs is back. Um, this one is actually a tough one. I've kind of come back and forth on both. Um, ball it is a home game for Baltimore. That's why I was kind of leaning towards them a little bit more. Um, but I'm actually going to go towards Detroit here. Okay. I, 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 I'm leaning towards Detroit. I think they're, you know, Baltimore coming back from London, that's going to be, there's going to be some kind of jet lag. Uh, there always is, right? Mm-hmm. So some adjustment. But um, I think this is going to be a really close game. I think this could go either way. Uh, I think this is probably going to, with the points, man, I, I, minus three for Baltimore, I think it's going to be a three-point game. I think the yeah. Lions might only win by three or four points. So it's hard to really even go off of just the negative three. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go Detroit Lions. They're 5-1 and one for a reason. And even without uh, Monty, which does suck, but and Jameson Williams looks good. Amaron St. Brown is back after missing what a week mm-hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, and yep. he looked he looked like he just came right back in last week and looked great. So give me Detroit here. You know what? I was gonna go Baltimore, but now I think I'm gonna go Detroit, and here's why. 
I don't – it's – even though Baltimore is 4-2 and two and they're a good team and Lamar Jackson is a great quarterback, it's mm-hmm. hard to trust their wide receivers right now. They uh-huh. are just dropping pass after pass after pass. And if you're going to leave – opportunities off the board like they've had in the last couple of weeks against Pittsburgh and this week against the uh, – last week against the Titans. I think the Lions will absolutely take advantage of that. Jerry Goff is playing out of his mind right now with the weapons that he has. So you yeah. know what? I will go with the Detroit Lions because I trust them to catch the ball more than Baltimore. Yeah, that's true. In Baltimore, I remember last week in London when we were watching the game, me and Josh were texting. We are like, oh, Baltimore about to run away with this. It looked like they were dominating. And then they just kind of – I don't know what happened. You know, yeah. they, it, they didn't run away with it. This isn't the same time, but Baltimore offense is putting up a, a crap ton of points. And mm-hmm. then you're, you're, you probably nailed it right on the head there with the, the receivers. They're just not catching everything and they're looking inconsistent. Josh is going to agree with this. He's also going to go with the Detroit Lions. Woo, let's go. Over on his 42. What you thinking? I'm going to go over. I think the Lions, I think it's going to be, uh, they'll win, uh, it, like I said, it could be a three-point game, three, yeah. four-point game, but I think it's going to be in the at least over 20 points each. So, yeah. yeah, I'm agree with Sean. I think this will be mid 20s, low 30s game. Give me the OVA over as well. That's good. All right, this should be an interesting one. The Pittsburgh Steelers coming off their bye week, taking on the Los Angeles Rams, who dominated the Arizona Cardinals last week. Again. Now taking mine in this game. For the Steelers, Deontay Johnson and Pat Fairmuth both could be back from their hamstring injuries. And for the Rams, both Kyron Williams and their backup running back. Ronnie Rivers are out. Ronnie Rivers to IR. They don't know about Williams yet. So, Sean, this could be an interesting game, man. Yeah, I think they uh, elevated Royce Freeman. Y'all yes. remember that motherfucker? Yep. Oh, my God. I haven't heard that name in forever. I remember when he was in Denver. Yep. Uh, and then I think, what's his name, Zach Evans? Uh, yeah, Zach Evans will be the starter. Yeah, he's going to be the starter. So um, that sucks, man. Uh, you lose losing both your running backs. But you know what? They they still got a good a lot of talent over there on that offense. So let's mm-hmm. not forget, you know, um, uh, Nakua and uh, and Cooper Cup. Cooper exactly. Cup looks still look – man, this, this guy misses four weeks and he comes in and he still looks dominant. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, yeah, I'm going to go Rams in him, this one. Uh, Pittsburgh has had times where they look good, and, yeah. and but there's also times that they look very stagnant on offense. We know what they could do. We've seen it. Yes. We literally streamed. We're like, this is the offense we want. Mm-hmm. But it's not always there. So I'm going to lean towards the Rams here at home, um, and I trust uh, you know the Rams defense. Uh, Pittsburgh defense hasn't always been – hasn't been that great. Yeah, this year. So uh, at times, so I'm gonna go with the Rams. Yeah, this is an interesting man. I'm gonna go Rams true, uh, true as well because I'm gonna trust their aerial game. Obviously, mm-hmm. over Pittsburgh's run game, the Rams typically give up a lot of uh, ground game. But mm-hmm. here's the deal: Najee Harris is just block. Can Jalen Warren be that guy? He could be, but I'm gonna trust. That Matthew Stafford, who's looking really good, is going to get the ball to Cooper Cup, get it to Higby, get it to Puka, get it to 2 2 Atwell. And I'm going to trust the Rams' passing game over the Steelers' run game in this one. So give me Los Angeles. Let's go. Josh is going to go. He's not going with the Rams, he's going with the Whams. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh is also going to go Los Angeles in this game. Let's go. Over under is 44. I'm going to go under. I'm, I'm under. an under machine this week, guys. Under machine. I'm going to go under as well. I think this would be a more low-scoring game with all the entries involved on both sides. I'm going to go under as well. Yes. All right. Let's go over to Seattle, where the Arizona Cardinals are coming off that loss to the Rams. Seahawks coming off that close loss to the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Sean, in this game, we could – he would could see the return yep. of Kyler Murray and Buddha Baker. So do you think that impacts this game at all? Uh, I think it could, obviously, if you're getting two of uh, those key players back. Mm-hmm. Um, but how's that going to change the offense, right? Because yeah. uh, the offense has been mainly a lot, you know, a lot of running the ball and stuff for Arizona. And now this might change it. The offense might try to open it up a little bit. But even if Kyler Murray does come back, I think he's going to be a little rusty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm still leaning towards Seattle on this one just because of that and Cardinals, you know, defense isn't really, you know, yeah. I think they could give us some points. So I think Seattle bounces back. They lost a close one, 
they lost a close one, but this mm-hmm. one, they're at home. It's not easy to play uh, in Seattle too. So uh, give me them and and Kenneth Walker, have yourself a feast. You yes, say. Yeah, the Cardinals, they typically have Seattle's number in yeah. Seattle. They beat them a lot, but mm. this Seattle team is really good. I know they lost to yeah. the Bengals, but the Bengals are starting to look like the Cincinnati Bengals again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Seattle Seahawks. Kyler Murray or no Kyler Murray. Geno Smith, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, maybe even in Jigbar are going to have a day against that defense. Whether Boone or Baker's in there or not. Yeah, that good. defense is terrible, man. I'll go Seattle. And also take Seattle with the points. I think they went by at least 10. Oh, yeah. The points, though. That's Minus interesting. Eight. Yeah. Hmm. I'll, I'll I'll take them with the points. I think it's, they'll win by 10. I, I'll okay. say that. I think it's, yeah, I'll take, but I will take the under. I think it's going to be like 20 to 10. Okay. So give me the under, but give me the points. Sean, do you hear that? No, I don't I, hear that. I hear some type of alert. Oh, it's Josh Fury's eliminator pick of the week. It's the wow. Seattle Seahawks. He's going with the Seahawks, and he's going with them as his eliminator. Wow, that's actually uh, gutsy by Josh. Yeah. Against a divisional rival, maybe Kyler Murray coming back. Well, he's probably used some of these other easier matchups. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> I was like, there's easier ones, but I, he, I think he's already used them. So that's why. Yep. Okay, I get it. I get it. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so you're taking the under 44 and a half. I'll take the over. I think Seattle could score over 30 points himself. I think the Seattle's defense isn't all that great. I think the Cardinals could put up between like 14 and 21 points. I'm going to take the over. Okay. All right. over. All right. Next up, let's go to Denver, where the Green Bay cheese heads coming off their bye week will face the Denver Broncos. And the only injury report looks like Aaron Jones off that bye week will be playing and this game shot. Thank God. I have him in a few fantasy leagues and Same. I was big on him this year. So I'm really hoping uh and, and it's perfect timing, right? Like shit, you're going against one of the worst teams in the league in Denver. Mm-hmm. And my uh, my God. Um Jordan Love and them need to get back on track. Jordan Love kind of had a rough last few weeks before the bye week. Yep. Um, after he looked like they everybody thought, Oh my god, we got another Hall of Famer here in Green Bay, guys. And then <laughs> he kind of they kind of came back down to earth. So you're going Packers here? Oh, yeah. I, I think that's a pretty much given, right? I think everybody should be going Packers here. Sorry, Denver. Even the Denver fans better not go Denver here. Come on. I'm. They, they're not riding. There, there's no let's ride here. Let's just go home. Okay. <laughs> just go home. I'm, I'm surprised Green Bay's only favored by one in this game. I'm shocked about that too, actually. I thought it'd be at least a touchdown. I'm going Green Bay. Jordan Love absolutely should have a bounce back game against that defense. I'm expecting Christian Watson to have his really first good game of the year, man. Aaron Jones to dominate Denver. Unless you guys can show any outs on that defense. I mean, I guess you showed it a little bit against the Chiefs last Thursday, but yeah. until you can put together a full game, I got to go Packers. Yeah, but I just don't trust their offense. They're gonna, then that's going to wear down their defense. And then, yeah. Yep. yeah. Josh is going to go ahead and take – his favorite team in the world here. He's also going to Green Bay Cheeseheads. Where's the small little logo at? Yeah. <laughs> right That's all we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> so all going Packers. Over under is 45. Sean, what you say? Under. Under? I'm, I'm an under machine. I told you, man. <laughs> I told you. It's going to be under. Um, yeah, I just don't trust uh, these offenses to put up a lot of points. I think Packers could probably run the ball and Good let point. Aaron Jones feast. So. You know, I, I like that point. Yeah, I'll go ahead and go the under 20 to 20 to 14 type game here. Give me the under as well. All right. All right. This one hopefully should be a fun one. The Kansas City Chiefs coming off that Thursday night football win against the Broncos. Host the charges coming off that loss to your uh, Dallas Cowboys. What you thinking here, man? Oh, this one's uh, interesting, man. Um. And I say that this is interesting because of the simple fact that uh, Chargers defense played a lot better than I thought they were going to this past mm-hmm. week. Uh, I, I, you know, maybe that's a little bit of the Cowboys being a little offense is not always there, but they were getting a lot of sacks. You know, they, I think they sacked Dak at least five times, four, uh, four or five times. Four or five like times, yeah. Um, so Chargers, you know, Khalil Mack, and we know they have talent there. The Khalil mm-hmm. Mack and Joey Bosa. And we have been seeing a lot of the Chiefs off, you know, getting, allowing pressure to get to Patrick Mahomes and, 
Yeah, we saw that last week, right? Uh, when we uh, streamed the Chiefs in Denver, like Denver, that defense, right? They made them. You know, they kept it close. Yeah. Uh, so this one's a little very, very interesting. Um, and so the Chiefs have been keeping it close with a lot of these teams. Uh, they're in Arrowhead, so this is gonna it's gonna be a tough place to play. But I'm going upset. I'm going Chargers. Ooh. I don't know why am I why? Um, I don't know. I like I said, I, I actually had the Chiefs going into this video, but Chiefs have been keeping it close. I think this is going to be one of those games where the Chargers are going to want to bounce back and to that close loss against the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And if the if the Broncos are able to keep it close, I think the Chargers can win. I really okay. do. And this might be a wake up call for the Chiefs here. Okay. So I love it. I'm going to go ahead and go with Kansas City, uh, but I will take the Chargers uh, with the points. I think Kansas mm -hmm. City wins by a field goal. I'm just going to trust Patrick Mahomes over any quarterback in the league. They did trade for Mikhail Harmon. They got him yeah. back today for a six-round pick. Probably won't see him in this game, but now mm -hmm. that gives Mahomes confidence. This team saying, hey, we want to go out. Get you some better weapons. I think Mahomes is going to take that. He's going to use that. I hopefully yeah. expect Isaiah Pacheco to have a good game. Look out for that rookie, Rasheed Rice. I think this is going to be a very good game. I'll go to Chiefs, but I'm going to take uh, the Chargers with the points. All right. Now, over-under is a question, Rocha. Yeah, that's at 48. Josh is going to take the Chiefs this one, and he says he's going to take them by 7.5 million. Wow. So he thinks the complete opposite of us on this one. Wowzers in the trousers. Okay. So um, for, hmm. for me, I'm thinking he's probably going to take the over in this game. What do you think? I'm actually – both offenses are going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to go under. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be like a 24-21 game, and that's yeah. going to be right under the over of uh, 48. So – I'll, I'll go. Uh, I'll go under. I'm gonna go over. I hope this game is an offensive shootout. Oh, Eckler, I, I would love that. Allen, Mahomes, Pacheco, Rice, uh, Travis Swift, or uh, Travis Kelsey. They all go up. I'm gonna go the over in this game, baby. All right. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to Sunday Night Football. We will be live for this game. Come and one. join us. It's the five and one Miami Dolphins. It's the five and one Philadelphia Eagles. Are they are most likely going to be without their tackle, Lane Johnson? They yeah. could get Darius Slate back, and we'll see the update. There's no real update on uh, Jalen Carter, the rookie. Sean, are you excited about this game, man? I'm real excited. I'm real, real freaking excited because I, you know, Dolphins, good team going against the Eagles, who, you know, uh, I hate them. I fucking hate them. No, but yeah, the Eagles coming off that loss. So uh, this is exciting. This should be a great game either way. Uh, uh, it should be a battle, honestly, against two great, two solid, great quarterbacks. So, Are you taking the Dolphins or are you taking your favorite team? Oh, I'm definitely going Dolphins. Um, yeah. you, know, the, you know, all year I've been talking about how the Eagles have been allowing teams, you know, to stay in games. The, the Eagles haven't been that dominant team all year, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, allowed the Patriots almost to come back. Uh, they almost uh, lost to a couple other teams. I think the Vikings even kept it close for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then it finally bit them in the ass last week against the mm -hmm. Jets. Um, Jalen Hurts and that offense has regressed a little bit. And, yeah. you know, and a lot of people were wondering how that would look with them losing their offense coordinator. And it's showing. I think it really is showing. Um, you know, S Swift is looking good and, you know, AJ Brown's looking good, but there's just inconsistency. Um, and, and I, it, it's that has to do with the offense corner. It has to be. There's no reason yeah. why Jalen Hurts is throwing all these interceptions, and he's. Uh, I think he's leading the division, by the way. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, I'm gonna go Miami. That offense is just high flying. Um, if they play up to their potential, I, I, Miami could be in pretty much anybody. I think, in my opinion. Uh, so give me Miami. But this could be a high scoring game. Uh, so I'm definitely going to go over on this one. I'm gonna go okay. ahead and throw that out there. But I'm going Miami. Yeah, you know what? I mean, you could call us biased for him being a Cowboy fan, myself being a 49er fan. I'll go in Miami as well, man. This, this, There's no defense besides Buffalo who can mm -hmm. show they can stop this team, and I don't think that's the Eagles. Yes, 
The Eagles pass rush could get to Tua, but Tua's been making plays all year, whether it's Tawado, Achan, Mozart, uh, Tyreek Hill, obviously. I'm trusting Miami's offense over Philadelphia's offense in this game. Yeah. And I completely agree. I'm also going there over. I think this could be a shootout. Josh has also agreed with us. We are all going with the Miami Dolphins in this game. Let's go. Eagles are going to lose two straight weeks, baby. It's up. Let's go. <laughs> all right. And finally, the final game of week seven, or it's my San Francisco 49ers. Coming off our first loss of the year to the Cleveland Browns. Taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Coming off that W against the Chicago Bears. Now you guys are wondering, what's the 49ers injury report looking like? Well, it's looking great. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Trent Williams all suffered injuries in that Cleveland game. And all three of them have a chance and are looking great to play in this game. I would say more so Debo and Williams will see with McCaffrey, it's all about pain issue. But I'm looking for the 49ers coming off this game to absolutely go into Minnesota. You guys know I don't have to say my pick. You know who I'm going with in this game. We're going to go into Minnesota. We're going to play angry. We're going to play great. And Minnesota are going to be without Marcus Davenport. So mm-hmm. I expect this 49ers offense and Brock Purdy, who had his worst game of his career, he still led the 49ers down the field and that final moments before Moody missed a kick. He's going to have a bounce back game. The 49ers are going to play angry. They're going to go into Minnesota, a team that barely put up points against the Chicago team last year. Last year. Last week. I think the 49ers go in. They win by at least two scores and they dominate the Vikings on Monday Night Football. Yeah, I don't think there's much to talk about. When it comes to this, man, this is a per- probably perfect matchup for bounce back game. Um, the Vikings have just looked, yeah, even even last week, man, when they were going against the Bears and Justin Jefferson was out, and you know, yeah. that does suck. But I was expecting them to Addison to get a lot more looks, and he, mm-hmm. yeah, he still scored, right? But yeah, yardage it wasn't there, his targets mm-hmm. weren't there. Like, it, it, the offense is just looking weird this year. I don't know yeah. what happened. Um, very disappointing in the Vikings this year, mm-hmm. um, it, offensively. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go Niners. I think y'all y'all should dominate. The defense should uh should have a feast. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be much for y'all's offense to need to do uh in this kind of situation. So um over under, over under. Mm. I'm gonna go under. Go under. I think it like I said, I don't think y'all are gonna have to do too much offensively. I think it's gonna be like a I think it's gonna be like a it could be 30 to 10. So it'll yeah. be right under the over under. So, uh, but yeah, I think it could be 30 to 10. Y'all will definitely, I'll take the points too. So, yeah. Josh is going to agree with us. I think a lot of people agree with us. Josh is also going to San Francisco 49ers. And yeah, I'll go under. I think the 49ers score 30 points. They could score more than 30 points in this game. I And I do think we hold Minnesota to 17 points or less. So even a 30 to 17 score makes it a 37 I'm going to go under with the potential of there being over the 49ers offense can explode. All right. There we go. All That's right. it, right? Oh, That's my God. It. Yeah, there was eight teams on by this week, so we got a lot less it's games, weird. man. It's weird. But, you know, this is the time of the year. This is the middle, middle of the season almost. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, guys, there we go. Thank you all for watching again. If you haven't already, hit that damn like button. If you're watching the premiere, let us know your picks along the way. Also, if you guys are watching the replay, thank you for watching. Make sure you guys let us know your picks down below. And as Josh always says, let's hope for a very healthy week and hopefully another crazy week of action. We we'll love it, guys. Let's go. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And we'll see you for the games, man. Going to be a fun week. Go Niners, baby. Bye-bye. Let's go.